second largest oil company in the U.S., as you can see, higher on that news. All right, back to Afghanistan. Just in the last hour, during the State Department briefing, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson praising President Trump's speech and Afghanistan policy outline. Secretary Tillerson said he believes the U.S. will be able to turn the tide in Afghanistan with a new approach. But he was very frank, admitting we may not see a battlefield victory against the Taliban, but diplomacy will be the key. For this entire effort is intended to put pressure on the Taliban to have the Taliban understand you will not win a battlefield victory. We may not win one, but neither will you. And so at some point, we have to come to the negotiating table and find a way to bring this to an end. So here's the question. Can we turn the tide in Afghanistan under the president's new policy? And does he have the support of the country? Certainly his generals. Let's bring in our panel of experts, Fox News military analyst, Lieutenant General Tom McInerney, and Foundation for Defense of Democracy's founder and president, Cliff May. Thank you both for being here, General. Let me get to you first. What's your initial reaction to what's being outlined as, as is being called a new strategy towards Afghanistan? Well, I hope it works, Ashley, but hope is not a strategy. The fact is, unless we go after Pakistan and ruthlessly dig out the Taliban there, uh, then it's not going to work. I'm very skeptical that the uh, Taliban are going to negotiate, and I think the only way you can do it is, as President Trump said yesterday, is kill them. And if we go in aggressively at that way, I think we have a chance. If we don't, we don't have a chance. Interesting. Cliff, what's your reaction to that? I, I did, my eyes did raise a little bit, my eyebrows, when I saw that, hey, we've got to get Taliban to the uh, negotiating table. Even if they come, we can't trust that they'll do what they say, right? I think that's right. I, look, I think there are a couple of things that are new and that are interesting here. One, I, I think it's quite correct that we have to be much rougher on Pakistan. Right now, uh, Pakistan is providing safe havens for Taliban and for al-Qaeda. That means that when our military chases the bad guys, uh, they get to the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. They essentially turn around and go home. That's like the state police chasing Bonnie and Clyde and stopping at the state line and turning around and going home. You can't do it that way. You've got to go to them and you've got to wipe them out wherever they live, wherever they, wherever they hide. That's absolutely necessary. Uh, I think that is going to be part of the, the newer strategy that President uh, Trump outlined last night. It's also important to have better rules of engagement. Soldiers can't be calling their lawyers every time they have a gun pointing at their head. Uh, I think it's also very important that President Trump has said we're not going to surge and then get out to six months. We are going to do something where that's necessary, and that means we're going to defeat the Taliban and kill mm -hmm. a lot of them. And it's the remnant that will come back, possibly, and negotiate. Diplomacy, economic warfare, we've got to cut off the funds for, these, for, for, these, uh, for the Taliban and al-Qaeda. We've never done that. And, of course, the military component, all instrumentalities of American power working together, we can have a better outcome. A great outcome? Maybe not, but at least we don't lose to the Taliban and al-Qaeda after more than 16 years of battle. And that leads me to my next question to the general. Is this winnable? And in your mind, general, what does a win look like in this part of the world whose past history we know is very checkered and is very difficult to gain any traction there that is long lasting? Great question, Ashley. A win is probably a stalemate in which we neutralize or, or, or take most of the Taliban out. Mm. Uh, and that can be done. We just have to use the intelligence that we have and the cross-border authority and a whole host of things. But we have to diminish and make sure that they do not want to fight. Now, there's so much money that has gone in in aid and all that that there's an awful lot of corruption going on in that country. It will not be the Jeffersonian democracy, and we shouldn't try to get it to be a Jeffersonian democracy despite that. But we can neutralize, I believe, the Taliban with very aggressive using our intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets, our air power, and as uh, was just said, taking the rules of engagement and really liberalizing them and let the war fighters go after them aggressively. Let me follow up very quickly uh, with Cliff. Cliff, what can we do with Pakistan? What kind of leverage do we have that they will actually toe the line and not be this uh, sanctuary for would-be terrorists and current terrorists? 
Uh, we have a lot of leverage that we haven't used yet. For one thing, mm. we can make it very clear that while we respect their sovereignty, we are not going to let them give safe haven to those who are trying to kill us and trying to kill our soldiers in Afghanistan. That's going to end. Secondly, we can use economic levers. We give them a lot of aid that can stop. Beyond that, there are a lot of people in Pakistan, in the government, in the ISI, which is the intelligence service, services, they have money in various places. We can begin to impose sanctions on them directly and make them feel the pain if they are, if they continue to be what they are now, an unreliable ally or a frenemy, essentially. They have to decide that they are going to be with us to root out the Taliban and al-Qaeda. If we And we have to look at the consequences of what would happen to Pakistan if we were to bug out, let the Taliban and al-Qaeda take over in Afghanistan. Imagine what happens then in Pakistan, right. which has, after all, nuclear weapons and some very radical people in it. Good point. We are already out of time. But thank you so much, Lieutenant General Tom McInerney and Cliff May. Thank you both for joining us today to talk about the ongoing uh, effort in Afghanistan. Appreciate it. Uh, thank well, you, Ashley. Thank you, guys. President Trump taking